the question says that in a database system unique timestamps are assigned to each transaction using Lamport's logical clock let ts of t1 and ts of t2 be the timestamps of transactions t1 and t2 respectively besides t1 holds a lock on the resource r and t2 requests a conflicting lock on the same resource r the following algo is used to prevent deadlocks in database system assuming that a killed transaction is restarted with the same timestamp this is the algo that is given to you if the timestamp of t2 is less than timestamp of t1 that means ts is older than t1 then t1 gets killed else t2 waits assume any transaction that is not killed terminates eventually which one of the following is true about the database system that uses the starvation the above algorithm to prevent deadlocks and you have to choose among the options whether the system is deadlock free starvation free none of them or either of them so first of all lamport's logical clock if the timestamps are assigned to transaction using lamport's logical clock this simply means that the timestamps are given to the transactions in the order in which they appear so a transaction coming first will have a lesser or a lower timestamp as compared to the transaction that is coming later all right now besides this you have to understand this algorithm or uh, when you read this algorithm it should be clear to you that a older transaction will always kill or wound a younger transaction that means this is a wound weight scheme that is given to you and in a wound weight scheme whenever two transactions are fighting or uh, requesting for the same resource then the transaction that is older or that came before will get the uh, hold of the resource and the younger transaction is killed so when i write timestamp of t2 is less than timestamp of t1 this means that t2 is older transaction t1 is the younger transaction and every time the younger transaction t1 is killed if it is fighting with the older transaction for the same resource that means uh, always the older transaction will get the hold of the resource all right so now when t1 is killed it is necessary that it should be restarted and the important thing is that it is restarted with the same time stamp so when a transaction is restarted with the same time stamp and it will ask for the same resource again it will not starve that means there won't be a situation when this t1 which was killed earlier when it is restarted it is again being killed because at that time t1 would become older as compared to other transactions that have been loaded into the system after t1 that means t1 would get eventually get the hold of this resource because when once t1 is killed and it is restarted again at that time t1 will become older as compared to other transactions that may be fighting for the same resource so t1 will never starve or any transaction that was initially killed will never starve and a system that does not starve implies that there is no deadlock all right a system with no starvation means a system with no deadlock so in this kind of system two things you have to identify that it is a wound weight timestamp ordering or deadlock prevention mechanism in which since the younger transaction or the kill transaction is restarted with the same timestamp it will eventually get hold of the resource and the system will neither be deadlocked nor it will suffer from starvation so the correct answer is d all right so that was all of the following is not a super key in a relational schema with attributes v w x y z and primary key v y the options are v x y z v w x z v w x y and v w x y z 
सो वेन एवर यू हैव टू आस्क और यू हैव टू थिंक अबाउट सुपर की एंड प्राइमरी की रिलेशन यू मस्ट नो दैट अ प्राइमरी की इज ऑलवेज अ सबसेट ऑफ सुपर की ओके इट मे बी अ प्रॉपर सबसेट और इट मे बी इक्वल टू द सुपर की बट जनरली सुपर की इज कंसिडर्ड एज अ सुपर सेट ऑफ अ प्राइमरी की सो द सुपर की विल ऑलवेज कंटेन attributes that are present in the primary key as well as some other attributes which may be redundant okay so if you carefully notice all these options each option must at least have the primary keys at the primary key attributes v and y option a has v and y okay then there are redundant attributes x and z option b does not have y so you can clearly mark option b as your answer because it will never happen that a super key has a subset of the attributes that are present in the primary key a super key is a key but it has to have some redundant attributes also okay so here since attribute y is missing attribute y which is a prime attribute okay prime attribute that means it is a part of the primary key attribute y which is a prime attribute is missing that is why it is not possible to have that v w x z would be a super key in this case okay so you can completely uh, forget about option c and d but even if you want to check here also we have v and y and in d also we have v and y so option b would be the answer now coming to the second question which one of the following is not a part of the asset properties of database transaction now if you remember asset properties as the acronym asset states a stands for atomicity b c stands for consistency i stands for isolation and d stands for durability so i'll write it down here you must remember these full forms it is very important atomicity of a transaction consistency of the database after the transaction has executed isolation of the operations of the transaction and durability okay so which one of the following is not a part of asset properties the options are atomicity consistency isolation and deadlock freedom no deadlock freedom is not the right answer it is not a part of asset properties d stands for durability so option is d now coming to the next question the question is the attributes of three arithmetic operators in some programming language is operators are these plus minus star and the precedence is high medium low their associativity is left right left and their arity is binary each all of them are binary operators the value of the expression this in this language is okay so now you are given three operators their precedence is given with respect to each other that means out of all these operations plus has the highest precedence it will be the operation plus will be performed first okay then after performing plus operation minus would be performed and the least precedence of star makes it the least preferred operation or this star operation would be performed at the end okay and associativity what does associative associativity tell us it tells us that in case there are two operators of the same kind that means if there are two plus or there are two minus just in this case there are two minus this minus and this minus so which one would be executed or which operation the left operation left minus would be performed first or the right minus would be performed first so if an 
an operator is left associative it means that the left one left operator would be executed here minus is right associative right associative that means out of these two minus signs this one the right one the second one would be executed before the first one the left one okay so now let's start evaluating this expression initially the expression is 2 minus 5 plus 1 minus 7 into 3 so the highest precedence is plus so without any doubt you can put a bracket around plus operation that means initially the first operation that would be performed would be plus operation now the remaining operations are minus and star but out of minus we have two minus so what would be the reference in this case we'll refer to associativity so associativity is right for minus sign it means that the right minus would be executed first so what would be our brackets in this case after performing the plus operation perform this minus operation all right and after this minus perform this minus that means 2 minus 5 plus 1 minus 7 and this multiplied by 3 and after this perform the last operation which is multiplication so 2 minus 5 plus 1 minus 7 multiplied by 3 all right so now let's execute these one by one initially the first the innermost bracket is executed 5 plus 1 gives you 6 now 6 minus 7 would give you minus 1 so the expression reduces to 2 minus 6 minus 7 is minus 1 multiplied by 3 okay now what we get 2 minus minus 1 is plus 2 plus 1 multiplied by 3 which gives you 3 into 3 which gives you 9 so the answer would be 9 here all right so again a not uh, not very difficult question you need to understand what the question is asking and demanding from you in return so that's all for today's lecture if you like this video please share it with your friends and mention in the comment section below how are you liking our preparation series and what other subjects would you like to see in future please subscribe to our channel of easy engineering classes for more lectures on such previous year solved questions and other computer science related subjects press the bell icon to get the latest notifications of our upcoming videos so that you don't miss any of our videos thank you for watching stay tuned good luck